new features in um, breakout rooms for Microsoft Teams. I'm Paul Kuijsels and help businesses with Microsoft Teams, SharePoint and Copilot for a living. That's why you can be sure that after watching this video, you will know everything about this new update. Yes, uh, to directly jump into it. Uh, maybe you have done uh, the video before. I made a video, I will uh, reference it here, um, about uh, the uh, breakout rooms, but there's a new functionality coming by. So what we are going to do now is I'm going to show you how this works, what you can do and uh, what, uh, yeah, what, how it works. So let's start off with uh, creating a new event. Uh, so we are going to create a demo, uh, a new breakout features. And uh, we are going to invite uh, Debbie and we are going to invite Monica Faden. And um, yes, this is the way we set it up. Well, you have a button here for breakout rooms, although I'm not going to use it because uh, sometimes you first have to save the meeting. So what I'm going to do to be sure that it's working, I'm going to send it out. And uh, once it's sent out, you will see it's, uh, it's here. And then we are going to edit it. And I'm going to the uh, breakout options. So to breakout rooms. And as you can see, it's loading. I want to create rooms. Let's create two rooms. And uh, as you know, best practice is to rename these rooms because else if you do a lot of these uh, breakout sessions, uh, you will not know which room is what, what is uh, chatted in, uh, in about. So I'm just going to do that for now. Demo break two. Oh. Right, the names are not the best names. Um, then what I'm going to do, because uh, normally you may set up some more things in the background for your uh, presentation, but now for now I'm going to join this meeting. Let's uh, drop it here so it's clear that it's here. I'm going to uh, kill the audio because else uh, it could uh, uh, conflict with my current audio. So I'm going to join. And as you can see, this is normal. Uh, as an organizer, you have all those buttons. I will click on the rooms and um, at, at the moment, no participants are assigned. Uh, I will accept on behalf of Debbie. Maybe see it here, no. Um, but uh, this is a normal uh, because I'm all alone here. And what um, I'm going to do when I'm all alone here moment is I'm going to go to settings. And here I have this uh, new button, let people choose their own rooms. So I'm going to enable that. And with enabling this, uh, that means that people can also automatically return to the main. All right, that's perfect. That's what we want. So this is all uh, what I have to set up. And um, if I want people to join the rooms, I have to open. So at the beginning, uh, we have uh, no one yet. So what we will do is I'm first going to go in as Debbie to show you what happens. So here we are in the profile of Debbie. I'm going to join this meeting. I'm uh, turning it off. Join. And um, what I see is uh, uh, I'm in the meeting, uh, the correct meeting. And under the three dots, that's no. Uh, so this is still a normal meeting because we don't see the breakout rooms. They are not open yet. So let's go back to Paul and um, what you see here and oh, put the, the correctly and uh, now Debbie is in there. I can assign her a room. So that's one of the things I can do, uh, but I leave her unassigned. 
because that's the basic functionality. But because we set the setting on to choose their own, if I open the rooms, you will see that um, here in Debian screen, she gets a message, view rooms. And uh, here we have the rooms selector, even in the browser. So I'm going to select a room and I'm going to join in this room. So what is happening? I move to a new room and um, let's see which room it is because I don't know that. Waiting for others, that's correctly. I will type a message here so we directly see it after this meeting. Um, but of course, you have to tell people uh, that the rooms are open, which room is what, and what they can do there. Um, going back to uh, to uh, to Paul, and I have to switch a bit. That's a bit of pity. But uh, here on Paul. Uh, you see that uh, the rooms are open and I also can view who is in the room. Now I still have the availability to assign uh, Debbie a room. So if I assign and I say, okay, you are going to break out two, I can also say, okay, I'm assigning her to break out two, which basically means that uh, she's going to be moved uh, in 10 seconds breakout room two takes a while so but as this option is open we can uh, go back to debbie and just check uh, because uh, she's now in uh, breakout two <coughs> she uh, can chat again uh, but she can also leave the room she leaves the room She's back in the um, uh, um, in the main room, and then she can join another room. So here we are. She joins the first room again. So there are plenty of options for end users to choose. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, as Debbie because here we are done, and we are going to leave the leave. And now uh, to be back in uh, Paul's uh, room, we see that she's still uh, here, but uh, it actually shows no um, zero participants. So maybe that's a bug, um, but uh, let's close the rooms. And uh, the people are going back to the main stage. I'm still <laughs> wondering why it's uh, showing this one. Um, but basically your meeting is done and now we come back to this chat because we are done with our meeting and here we see that we have two chats. We have the test meeting with Debbie in it, she choose herself and we have the meeting where I have assigned her. So that are the new items in the breakout rooms. If you like this video, like it and uh, or give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And um, if you want to know more about Teams, you can click here and view the next video. Thanks for watching.